for this video, I'm going to quickly uh, walk you through uh, why exactly you need to build uh, OB1 of your own, uh, except for the printed parts. So I'll make it easier uh, to explain. I'm going to put uh, one of my OB1 here. So take this as a line to separate the, uh, the table into two parts. So this one, the left hand side is the no hardware route, meaning you just need to print all the parts out, right? And then you, you also, so these are printed, okay? You also need printed uh, parts for the, I call dummy, dummy parts, okay? To replace the LED module here. So that's two uh, CR2032 uh, batteries, right? So these are the spacers. Because I take uh, the outlook of the metal look of the uh, batteries as one of my design. So you need a spacer to fill the void. And also it's an opportunity for you to make the color have the, um, bright or uh, vibrant uh, contrast. Also, you can see there's a printed solid um, crystal. S uh, for those of you who don't need any lighting uh, feature or illumination, uh, it still look good. It still look the same exactly. Even without the battery, the real battery install, you got a spacer here and you got the solid uh, crystal here. Uh, for those of you asking me in DMs, uh, you're wondering uh, if Obi-Wan still works without all the fancy stuff especially without the batteries and the lighting. So with this route, no hardware, rest assured, <clears throat> you still got a full function OB1 minus the lighting effect. Uh, then you, you are gonna be worried about, okay, now, now I don't have any um, lighting. Can I still see clearly um, the ammo counter here? Of course, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna depend on, on your choice of choosing the right color, right? So this is an example here. Just use the, the bright color or you have the high contrast of the color uh, uh, or uh, tone difference. You're going to see it like really easy. Even just in, with indoor uh, lighting, you can still see it like really, really easy without uh, turn this on, right? Oh, I forgot. For the, for the rubber bands, um, it doesn't really matter what kind of size you're getting in terms of the outer diameter OD. Uh, it doesn't matter. The one I'm holding is like four centimeters in terms of OD. But uh, you, if you have bigger one, which is actually better, uh, you can just uh, you can always uh, trim it and then uh, reloop it and make it uh, smaller. Which I'm going to uh, show you more in details in other tutorial videos. If anything, never go with the thicker one. Go with the thinner, thinner one. You can easily uh, buy the or source the rubber band in pro pretty much uh, every uh, dollar store, right? That's the now uh, or no hardware part. So that's done. Let's move on to the hardware route. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we are going to code. So there are three sections, okay? So the first one here, uh, is, uh, that's just coded. Okay, the three springs are actually the same ones. So that's just called it small springs, okay? So this one, we call it, uh, large spring and this is constant force spring and we just call it drum drum spring uh, and the last uh, part of that is the uh, lighting or a led module right so it's super easy you can see just two batteries and two led uh, light bulbs right okay so that's tackle it one by one uh, you're gonna see the spec uh, in the um, uh, description so small spring and then you need one of this for the make follower or one of this for the make follower. So for each magazine, you just need either this one or this one. You don't need to have both, okay? So that's why the picture you, you're gonna see uh, in the description uh, for the um, hardware guideline, you're gonna see this group plus this or this, right? Plus this. So, so that's why you have an or here. So you don't need both. You just need one of them. Okay, so this one, is the lighting uh, module, LED module for the uh, Kyber crystal ch uh, chamber and also for the ammo counter. Um, it's super easy, you just need two CR2032 uh, batteries and two standard uh, five millimeter uh, LED uh, light bulbs. Uh, it's quite standard, it's super cheap. You, you, it's so cheap that almost impossible for you to just source one or just two. It always comes in uh, in a bulk. Of, uh, or a pack of LED bolts, right? Like this, just only for a few bucks. Uh, I definitely 
will urge you to try different colors. So sometimes they have an assorted a pack of this with different colors. Definitely get that. Uh, it's super bright with these kind of uh, batteries. And also, uh, I can suggest you, uh, recommend this to you because it got uh, so many different colors, right? And still cheap. It looks the same though. So you do have to uh, uh, put a battery on and see uh, how what kind of color it is for that. Uh, so, oh, okay, this is out of juice also, this one. Okay, uh, if anything, because you don't need any soldering work for for the installation of the lighting module, uh, all you need is just the prior, uh, which is a method that was uh, that has been adopt, uh, adopted for years for uh, small um, uh, uh, like hand handcraft um, uh, items. So it's quite safe. You don't even need a capacitor. Uh, you can just do do this directly, right? And then. You don't need uh, capacitors. It has been tested. But for certain color, especially like uh, yellow ones, the, the, the lighting effect is not good, right? Uh, because there's a lack of a capacitor. But if you still want to have like a yellowish color of the light, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, I have tested for you. So this one is kind of orange. It's not really yellow, but this is an example for you. So you just simply printed the crystal with a um, semi-transparent or a transparent or a tinted uh, filaments. Uh, it can be PO, POA or PTG, doesn't matter. So, and put a white light in it. So still, visually it's orange or yellow lights. Uh, so yeah, you still have uh, endless uh, possibilities in terms of the lighting. Okay, so we have that covered. Okay, I'm going to show you some real examples uh, of how you look for each route, okay, or each options. Uh, sometimes too many options can be kind of uh, confusing. I get it. So that's why I make uh, this video. So just from the glance of it, can you even tell this is powered by Sprint only? Like no hardware at all. Like 20 parts plus three rubber bands. And it works with all functions. Of course, uh, this one, I choose to have lighting. So I do install the LED uh, modules here, but remember we have the printed parts, right? Printed parts here. You can just uh, drop this in and replace everything. It still look awesome, still look the same. It just doesn't have the lighting effect. You can still move the uh, switch, but it just doesn't have any lighting effect, of course. Okay, for the Mac, so you may want to have uh, multiple Macs, right? So just one Mac, you need to have two rubber bands if you are choosing for it. Uh, no hardware route, right? So you loop a few uh, loops here. And then an another one is here. So one on the top, the other one is for the make follower. So this is the make follower. This, this is where you drop your uh, disk in it, right? So that's that. As for the uh, receiver, you only need one spring for the top of this. Okay, you can see, I still hide it pretty well. You can just see a little bit of the rubber band part of it here, right? So it's a loop like this. And inside of the gearbox, you you got no rubber band there. Uh, if anything, you got a printed uh, spring here for the trigger. But 50% but of the return of the trigger is like a gravity uh, drop. So you don't need a lot of force from that uh, printed um, spring for the trigger. Uh, so again, you can always go back to the route here. Uh, you can even find the spring from, for, for the trigger spring only. For the trigger spring, it's super easy to source. You can even find a spring from here and then just cut it, right? Okay, so this is the no hardware route. Still look awesome. So two rubber bands for the magazine, one rubber band for the rest of this. So this is the route for the hardware. Okay, you can see the spring here. Oh, actually this is better. Let's just try this. So you can see the spring here for the make follower. So for each magazine, you need one, just one. You can you can drop two actually, but the trigger pull will be awful. So just, just suggest to use one. One small spring, drop this in directly. Uh, and then a large spring here for the make follower. Or, or if you find it hard to source this, go with the trunk magazine here, a uh, trunk spring here. So this is how it looked like with this installed for the Mac follower here. As you can see, yeah, you cannot see spring here, but here you can see it. Still very discreet. 
uh, you can see a bit of an end here. It's hard to see, but here, right? So that goes back to the detail of this spring. The it should be very easy, especially for you guys uh, who lives in North America. Uh, this is for uh, widely used uh, for uh, Nerf community. If you are also a three D print uh, enthusiast, and then you print your own printed uh, Nerf magazine, then most of you are using this. Um, you can see the spec in the description. If anything, uh, many uh, manufacturers uh, make this, right? But sometimes you find it hard uh, to find exactly the same in terms of how they bend the end of it. Sometimes you have a little hole here, sometimes you don't, and sometimes the length of that is different. And for for, for this kind of uh, spring, sometimes you can see the, the total length is like, the total length means if you extend, like how long it can be extended, uh, 450 millimeter. And or 600 millimeter. I have tried both and both fit. Okay. Uh, if anything, it's the difference here, right? So I I would say don't worry about it because at the end of the day, uh, you still have to use the prior uh, and then just bend it straight or almost straight uh, to fit in the magazine here. So don't worry about it. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. And the shape of this or the length of uh, the end of this doesn't matter. Okay. So for each magazine, you just need one small uh, spring on the top uh, for the return of this, and then one large spring for the mag follower, or you just uh, need, a, so one small spring on top still, but uh, go with just one of this strong make, uh, spring, this one. As for the uh, main body, the receiver, you just need one uh, small spring on top and one small spring for the trigger. Uh, it, it just feel much better uh, if you install this on the trigger because right now you are not using the printed one anymore. Uh, again, if you, you, you want to go with uh, everything with the rubber band except for the trigger, for the uh, better feel, feeling of the trigger pull, uh, you can always try to source it from your one of your pen, right? The, this kind of pen, and then just cut the spring uh, into the desired uh, lens, which I'm going to dive deeper in uh, other uh, videos. Or in terms of the filaments, uh, I'm going to show you how to make a perfect OB-1 if you have uh, this kind of filaments. Uh, in short, you can use POA or PDG. I haven't had the opportunity to try ABS, but I suppose it, it will work. But PDG, POA, doesn't matter, it works, okay? Uh, except if you want to have a better light emitting uh, effects, which is quite uh, self-explained, you're gonna need some filaments that is uh, either clear or, or uh, transparent or translucent or semi-transparent. Uh, or you can always go with those uh, glow-in-the-dark uh, filaments. So this this one is the one glow-in-the-dark. So it will give you kind of look like a misty look, a kind of creamy white and undertone with the red uh, color here. So <laughs> this is the Super Mario thing anyway. Uh, yeah, but you need uh, those clear part here, here, and here. So basically three parts. And so that you can have the lighting effect, not just from the crystal, not just from um, the screen here, you also have some lighting effect here. So uh, it looks much brighter in person because right now I'm, I have a lighting directly above it, but you can still see here, right? So that's that. And also for for the last three rounds, um, I have a design that I give you separate uh, color selection so that you can turn. Let's just say when you have a full uh, mag with uh, fifteen rounds, all the way down to four, you have the same color. Okay, uh, then I give you the choice of uh, turning it red for the last three rounds. So meaning you have to have a uh, different parts, right? because this is all mechanical. You have a plate for different color. I suggest you to use red. Of course, you can put it in other color if you like. Okay, again, 15, right? So for this, uh, I'll suggest you not to use transparent. There's a really small plate in it that look like this. For this one, I suggest you to use the solid color one instead of the uh, the, the tinted red uh, fil filaments um, like a transparent or semi-transparent ones. Don't use that for this part because I have a carve out. 
uh, which is just the perfect thickness for the light to, to be emitted through the plate and still carries that red tone uh, to your eyes. If you are using transparent, nothing wrong with that except it looks more white than red because the light the lighting is actually quite uh, quite strong, quite powerful. Um, so that when the light uh, goes through that, it doesn't carry much of the red uh, pigments. It's not pigments, I know, but but you know what I mean. So for this one, go with the solid color, okay? Other, other things about the lighting, just go with the uh, transparent, semi-transparent, or the glow-in-the-dark uh, stuff. Okay, I think uh, that's it. And thank you so much for your um, uh, kind interest. And I'll see you around. Bye.